Do you want to learn martial arts? Do you want to get stronger? Do you want to fight like the people in the action movies? Do you want to get tougher and more confident? Then here's the top 10 reasons to practice Wing Chun. Okay, if you want more of these awesome Wing Chun videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, and comment, like, and tell your friends. With that said, let's get on with the top 10 reasons to practice Wing Chun. Number 10 on the list is Bruce Lee practiced Wing Chun. So if you want to learn to fight like Bruce Lee, learn how he first learned Kung Fu. One of his main Kung Fu's that he practiced with Ip Man was Wing Chun. And he integrated a lot of that into his own martial arts, which is Ji Kune Do. Number nine on the list is the directness of Wing Chun. What do I mean by that? One of the core concepts in Wing Chun is being direct. You want to find the closest distance between point A to point B. You want to have the most direct distance and most direct way of attack. Instead of going around the person, I want to go straight in and directly go into my target. So for self-defense applications, it is very useful because in self-defense, you only have a few seconds to end the fight. You don't want to be dancing around or walking backwards. You want to go in there, charge in, and then overwhelm the attacker. You want to attack the attack. So that's the core concept of Wing Chun. And guess what? It helps in real life too. If you practice this in Wing Chun, in martial arts, you will also transfer into your day-to-day -day life. You'll be able to attack problems head on instead of procrastinating, instead of avoiding things, you're gonna learn how to go head on into problems and just solve the problems in the fastest and most efficient way. Number eight on the list is economy of motion. So instead of winding up to attack a person, which gets you more power, I wanna just go from point A to point B. My fist is here, my target is here. I'm just go straight to the target without any unnecessary movements, without any winding up. So this is one of the core concepts of Wing Chun is I want to use the most economical way of attacking with the least amount of effort, but with the most amount of impact. Okay? So the key thing is to learn how to generate force and power through a short distance. Because in most uh, conventional ways of fighting, it's long range. I have all this distance from here to here to generate power. And then a lot of it is generated through your hips and through your core and through your legs. Okay? But in Wing Chun, we want to learn how to generate a tremendous amount of power in a short distance. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> <Is> it good? <laughs> so you need to learn how to generate power with very little body movement so that it doesn't tell him that I'm about to punch. It's very imperceivable and also it's very hard to react to because when you can see the punch coming from here, he has more time to move his head, more time to block. But if I'm punching from here, this has literally no time to react to it. Boom, like that. How can you move your head that fast, okay? Especially if I go, go like this, right? If I have a chain punch reaction, how can you block everything? Which brings us to seven on the list, which is hand speed. In Wing Chun, you learn how to use your hands really quickly, okay? So from learning how to be economical, then you learn to have speed. Because the less effort and more relaxed you are, the faster you become. So attacks like that become very hard to see, hard to react to because they're close. And then the faster you get, it's really hard for your attacker or, the, or your opponent to react to them. So there's a lot of drills in Wing Chun that make you have faster hand speed, like the chain punch drill. Okay, I'm doing it slow. But the more you do this, then you do more, you can use it to attack, okay? So, okay? So if that is going to somebody's place, Okay, it's not meant to knock somebody out, it's just meant to end the fight. You don't have to knock somebody out to end the fight. You just need to control his will and control his mind and control his body. So if he's in the defensive mode like this, he can't attack you, right? So to keep him in the defensive mode, I'm going to launch a chain punch attack. It'll take me three seconds and then just run. Very simple tactic. Number six on the list is coordination. In Wing Chun, one of the core concepts is to block and attack at the same time simultaneous attack or what you call aggressive defense, okay? So coordination requires the use of both hands at the same time. In many traditional and conventional martial arts, it's just one hand, hand, one, two, or one, two, or one, right? Or one, right? Or one kick. So what happens in Wing Chun 
is the core concept is to block and kick at the same time or control and kick at the same time or touch and attack at the same time. So here's what I mean. I can grab and punch at the same time. So I'm doing a control, control and attack at the same time. At the same time, if he does a, it does a hook, right, I can block and punch at the same time. So I'm doing two things at the same time. Another way is that, let's say he's coming in with a straight jab, I block and I punch at the same time. So I'm defending and attacking at the same time. Another way that you can use this is I can build a defense in my attack. So if, for example, his arm is like this, I have an attack, but my defense is built in, built into the attack. So not only if I'm attacking and punching him in the face, I'm using my forearm to deflect his hand so that it's defending it. So I have a built-in defense in my attack, okay? Same thing goes for this way, okay? If I slice in this way, I have an attack going here, but at the same time, I'm using my forearm to slice and redirect his fist that way, so it becomes a defense. So, so I use both it as a attack and defense at the same time. So using both hands at the same time, it requires coordination, and when you use coordination, then you can fight twice as fast because you're doing twice as many things as a normal person without training will be doing. So this is one of the reasons why people perceive Wing Chun to be so fast, because instead of doing one thing per a, a unit of time, you do two things per unit of time. So in the eyes of your opponent, you're actually fighting twice as fast as him. Number five on the list is that Wing Chun was designed for smaller people. It was fabled that Wing Chun was founded by a woman. Okay, whether that's true or not, it doesn't really matter. But Wing Chun is actually very effective for smaller people. The reason is because it's designed based on directness and based on uh, multiple attacks at the same time. Okay, or, or fast attacks and based on controlling the opponent in a very close range. Because I'm smaller, lit my hands or my arms are just naturally going to be shorter than someone who's bigger than me. Okay? So I don't want to be trading against someone with, with my short arms versus long because I'm staying in this range, then he's going to hit me and I can't even reach him. So it works for smaller people because I want to be in the closer range where I'm too close for him, for his long arms, but it's a perfect range for me because my arms are short. So it's actually designed for smaller people because now my arms are short, I have, can use both hands on him versus one because I'm more squared up to him, okay? And I have more access to different parts of attack, okay? The back of the head, things like that, okay? If my hand is small, If my hand is small, right, then I can get into the bases like this. Let's say even if he blocks like this, let's say he does a traditional block like that, there's still this little hole. Now if I'm doing boxing, I got big gloves on, he got big gloves on, if I punch like this, it's gonna block, right? This is big gloves, it won't go through. But because I have small hands, I'm smaller, I can actually slice right through here. So his block is very ineffective. For example, if he just moves a blade and blocks, there's this little hole, he this little space that I can just go straight and punch him in between his guards, okay? And if I do it really quickly, it's very difficult for someone who is big, and usually if you're bigger, you're gonna be a little bit slower to react to those things. So you're relying on your speed, you're relying on the advantage that you're smaller, and you're relying on the directness and the overwhelming force of your attack. Number four on the list is that Wing Chun was designed for close range, right? So all those concepts work together so that you can fight in a close range, okay? When most people, let's say in conventional boxing, when they get close range, what they do? They just clinch, they just grab, right? So what you want to do is use this range and use it to your advantage because you're, you're shorter, you're smaller, okay? So you can actually have an advantage at a closer range because you can move, move your arms, you can generate more power in a closer range than he can. If I use this distance and punch in this distance, it's actually really advantageous to me. So really good against bigger attackers if you train this properly. So the reason why Wing Chun is designed for close range is so that you can use all those things that we talked about. You can use the control and attack, okay? You can use the chain blast, all right? And you can use the fact that you are in a closer distance and there's gaps in between. In the closest range, it's harding for him to react to them. And also you can put two hands 
on the person to control him rather than just one hand. If I square it to him a little bit more, then I can use both hands at the same time. Okay, I can do two attacks in the same amount of time. I can use one hand to grab and control, use one hand to redirect and punch, right? I can do something like that, okay? So that's the advantage of Wing Chun. You learn how to attack in a close range that people are not used to fighting in when it is in a grappling situation. Number three on the list is sensitivity. So what is sensitivity? What do you mean by sensitivity? So this is some, a concept that's very hard to grasp for someone who hasn't had martial arts experience before. But this is one of the main concepts and the core concepts of Wing Chun again. And it takes a long time to learn, but it's very rewarding because usually in the regular conventional boxing, right, it's basically relying on your eyesight, okay? Most of it relying on your hand-eye coordination. So basically it's over there, I see his punch coming, then react to it, right? I see another punch coming, then I react to it, right? Duck, right? I see another punch coming, I slip, right? Or I parry, okay? So I have to use my eyes to uh, see what's happening, the input's coming, my brain processes it, then it tells my hand or whatever to do something. So there's three things happening, okay? Observation, processing, and then another command. So three things. Now in Wing Chun, we use sensitivity. I can use my, I'm basically, don't fight with your eyes closed, but I'm just trying to prove a point, is that if he tries to punch me, I don't need to use my eyes. I didn't even open my eyes, but I know he's punching me because I just felt it coming in, right? You try to punch me again, right? I don't even use my eyes. I just used the feeling. I just felt him coming in because I have contact with him, okay? So without using my eyes, I can use my contact, redirect and punch, right? Or redirect and attack, right? and then punch, okay? So I did that with my eyes closed. And this is a lot faster, and the reason is, it takes a lot less processing power for my brain to interpret the signal from my hand than it takes to interpret the signal from my eyes. So then I can react to this a lot faster than if I was seeing a punch coming, okay? And the reason why this works so well is because in close range, okay, it's not much time for someone to see a punch coming. It's so close, boom, how can you see that coming, okay? When it's from here, boom, you can see it coming, even if I'm fast. If I'm here, boom, you can't see that coming because it, it's, you're only one or two foot away. So one drill we do in Wing Chun is called Chi Sao, which means sticking hand. I want to stick to this hand. And what this does, it looks really funny, but what I'm doing is I'm actually training the sensitivity in, with different hand positions. A lot of the Wing Chun techniques start with these positions or are based on these positions. Here's the Bong Sao, right? Here's the Tan Sao down here. Here's the Fok Sao. Here's the Fok Sao, okay? So, these are positions where we learn how to take in or absorb the force of the attacker. So if his arms drop too low here, right, I can just punch straight in there. Okay, if he's opened up too much this way, then I just go in and, and attack. So what you learn is you learn to find openings without even using your eyes. Just from the sensitivity and from this drill, you learn to find openings, like I can open it up like this, for a train punch, right, right, or I can go over, Right? Or I can trap like this, trap both of these arms, you one, two, arms are trapped with one, okay? Or I can go like this, I trap both arms with kind of one arm, so I have two arms against one. So you learn things like that, to use your sensitivity, to find the openings, to detect it if he's going to attack, and then use that to your advantage. And that can be only done through sensitivity, and you can't really do this with your eyes because you're in such a close distance. Number two on the list on reasons to learn Wing Chun is you get all the benefits of learning martial arts, which is to get stronger, you get stronger muscles, you get faster, you have better stamina, you have better flexibility, you have better posture, okay, if you practice properly, and you get to become more confident because of all those attributes that you build in yourself, mentally and also physically. And the good thing about learning Wing Chun is a little bit different from other martial arts out there. So if you want to try something different, you're somebody that doesn't want to just be like everybody else, then this might be for you. And the final reason to learn Wing Chun and practice Wing Chun is drum roll. You learn to fight like Donnie Yen in Ip Man. So a lot of people want to learn Wing Chun because they love the movie series Ip Man. One, two, three, is there a fourth one now? Probably. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> because it's so cool and um, the character is cool. It's based on a real story of Ip Man uh, who taught Bruce Lee Wing Chun and about what he did in his life. And it's a really cool movie, really good choreography, and it's just really motivating for people to learn Wing Chun and to fight like him. 
So you want to learn Wing Chun, you can learn how to fight like Donnie Yen, the actor in the movie Ip Man series. So there you have it, the top 10 reasons to learn and practice Wing Chun. I hope that motivates you to take up Wing Chun. So find a good school, find a good trainer, find a good teacher, find good training partners that you can trust to practice this with. And I'm gonna guarantee you it's gonna be worth the journey. So I'll see you soon in the next video.